So hi, everyone. Welcome to the South Texas College Library Art Gallery webinar series, workshop series inside the artist studio. Uh, my name is Gina Atfos, and I plan exhibits and events here at the college, along with my two coworkers, Kristen Sanchez and Beatriz Montejano. Betty did my makeup today, so um, everybody give a shout out to her. <laughs> uh, very beautiful. Um, in this particular episode, we're going to bridge the two art forms of poetry, or the two, two art forms of poetry and digital collage. And I want to thank everyone as for this being the last one. So to everyone who tuned in either from the beginning or caught one episode, if this is your first um, and can only join us for a couple minutes, thank you. We really appreciate it. Also to everyone who has presented this semester um, for being adaptable and patient um, from your own houses and often without any fancy equipment. Um, so today we have with us um, to lead us on this journey, Aimelohi Aramasel and Divine Agbeko. Aimelohi is a community organizer based in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, she began her advocacy work in 2016 and has been an active voice in her community, organizing around racial justice, reproductive justice, mental health, and LGBTQ rights. Divine is a multidisciplinary designer living in the Rio Grande Valley as a graphic designer and collage artist. Her curiosities circle around interpersonal and intrapersonal life and relationships and are visually explored through maximalist, surrealistic, and minimalistic approaches. Um, so with that, I don't want to take any more time. Please feel free to join us in the chat and put your questions in there. And we'll circle back to them. Uh, please help me in welcoming I'm Alohi and Divine. Thank you so much, Gina. Um, what a great introduction. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, as previously mentioned, my name is I'm Alohi Aramaseli. Feel free to call me Ima, and I'm joined with Hi guys, my name is Devina Beckham and I am the digital collagist for today. Thank you for having both and Amaloki here today to show you what we have. I really appreciate it. We appreciate it. Yes. Um, so we're so honored to be able to close out this super wonderful series that South Texas College Library has been putting together. Um, and what better than in April and National Poetry Month for us to be able to um, take you through our journey of what visual poetry means and look like and looks like for us. So um, a little bit about me, I am a free verse poet, a community organizer, a speaker, um, someone's daughter, sister, friend, auntie, all of the things. Um, and I am 23 years old and reside in Palmhurst, Texas or Mission, Texas, born and raised. I am of Nigerian descent though, first generation uh, immigrant. Um, and I kind of come to my poetry as a means to provide myself some emotional release, um, comfort and understanding. Um, at the same time, although I do it more for cathartic reasons and for myself, I do um, aim to kind of sharpen my blade and further develop my own unique style of simple yet highly emotive poems. Um, I began when I was a teenager in high school full of angst, as I'm sure many people can relate. Um, and I started to write my poetry on Tumblr um, just cause I felt misunderstood. You know how it goes, those teenage blues. And I just needed somewhere to like, kind of just take it all off of me. Um, and I started to write my little poems on Tumblr just for myself. However, I did have friends and family who followed me on there and saw my writings and spoke all types of like praises and life into what I now consider a gift, which is my gift of gab, my, my way with words. Um, and that's what really gave me the confidence to continue um, and actually kind of affirm myself like, you know what, maybe I am a poet. Um, which still kind of sounds so funny and weird to say, um, cause it's like, dang, I'm no Maya Angelou, but maybe someday I'll get there, right? Um, but my poems usually surround the topics of love, heartbreak, um, and more recently self-exploration and spirituality. 
as you can see, these are some of my older works up on the screen. Um, I usually write when I, again, I'm overwhelmed and it's usually these moments in my life that really inspire a lot of creation. So um, I do wanna kind of bridge my work into Devine's because she's going to go ahead and talk a little bit about herself uh, shortly, but we have been best friends of 10 plus years. Um, and she just so also happens to be an amazing and powerful artist, um, but uses a different medium than I. Um, but we both have overarching themes of vulnerability, honesty, um, intuition, and just general inspiration by our emotional bodies and the cool shit that we see and experience in our work. So that's kind of how we, you know, find our relation. But you'll kind of see as we work, go through our workshop that we... Um, our work complements one another, but doesn't necessarily reflect just given where we both are um, in our in our in our lives. So thank you all for hearing a little bit about me. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to my good sis. That was so beautiful. Thank you for those kind words. I love like you. Well, hi again, everyone. My name is Divine Arfeko. Um, I'm a collagist. I'm 22 years old. And I'm from Togo, West Africa, but I reside in McAllen, Texas. Um, I've been collaging only for almost two years now. Um, we're reaching the two year mark. Um, when I think June begins, I started off in 2020 and collaging was just a means to an end. It was just a way for me to get to point A to point B, if that makes sense. I was a, um, design minor at the time. And I think I was in my junior year of college and going on to senior year, I knew my schedule was going to be heavy loaded with just design concentrated classes. And I wanted to be exposed to that newness on my own instead of letting someone take me on that ride just to prepare myself and just like to soothe myself at the same time as well. But um, after I started collaging a couple of times, I gave my work to my friends just so they could review it and look at it for me. And they had such nice things to say. And I was surprised. And, and then I was like taking that and on top of being like, oh, wow, I did something new. Getting love and support from people that I cared about um, kind of made me want to soar further. And even in that same month, actually, I um, exhibited my art for the first time in a virtual exhibition that me and my friends actually curated. So I was both behind the scenes and in front of the camera at the same time. And um, collaging has been um, a new thing for me to define my rest by. So my definition has expanded for sure. And the thing about art that's so comforting is that um, anyone can really be an artist, which is what I felt, right? Um, progress is solely based on what you want to see for yourself. I used to think that people who were artists, who were just gifted, had like that Simba moment whenever they were babies and that thing was just crossed, to, <laughs> crossed on their forehead and it was just ingrained that this was gonna be their path, their mm -hmm. gift. And the people who didn't have it just did not have it. Nothing to work towards, just give up. But it's actually a lot more uh, nuanced than that. Um, art and art takes a lot of dedication and commitment and in order to see yourself progress you have to attempt and I've attempted many times and <laughs> I think or I actually do I do love where my art is and I do love what I've been able to make and what I'm seeing right now in front of you just like the slides right here I'm just in awe that I was able to you know come up with those things on my own um my art before didn't really circle around anything but I was always interested in what I was interested in. So that may be um, fashion, abstractness, um, familial ties, relationships, anime. Um, I wanted everything that I like to come out in a piece. And so that's why whenever you look at my old work, nothing really kind of ties together with the last, but I understand that it's been me throughout like the eras or the different months and I think that's um, really special and it's really cool to be here with everyone and to be here especially with my bestie I'm Alohi um, I love her dearly and it's so cool that I get to be alongside her very um, expressive and emotive and such powerful work as well so thank you guys for being so kind and offering us the floor and 
hopefully we all learn something out of this demonstration and just thank you again. Yes, thank you so much, Devine. Um, I remember you said that like collages is like the way that you can kind of capture and like measure yourself. Um, and you saying like that even though none of your art kind of correlates necessarily, it's still all you is how you've been able to capture your growth. Um, and I definitely resonate with that. I feel like I write as a way to remember um, because my memory is shitty, um, but it's like so nice that I get to like be transported by my own words um, whenever I reread my own works and see that that is also still me. It still resonates with, you know, 16 year old Ima still resonates with 23 year old Ima in like some very small ways. So I definitely feel that. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about some of our highlighted works that we really wanted to share with you all. Um, so I do not have a title for this poem. Um, however, I do. Um, I, I don't really ever have a, a name for any of my poems, but I'm just going to go ahead and read it for you all. Um, and I'm going to kind of break it down and how I kind of came to it and where I was in my life. Um, so. I do wonder what you tell people when they ask, what happened? Do you tell them about your selfishness, your inability to see past your own nose? Do you tell them about your shortcomings, my giving and your taking? Do you tell them it was my fault for being so naive? Do you tell them that you just wanted more, wanted me, but wanted more, wanted it all, wanted me one way and wanted him another? Do you tell them about how our bodies melded together in a mosaic of mahogany and sepia tones every night, underneath cloud white cotton sheets, but you were so far away from me in the blues of your mind that the terrain of our physicality did not matter? Or do you tell them the cliches? We just wanted different things. It just wasn't working out. We're better off as friends. I do wonder if they can see that you're lying. So I wrote this poem, I think in like 2018, I think I was like 19 or 20, and I just experienced my first little heartbreak, and it got me good. Um, I was in college, and just being very experimental, I was in um, my first relationship with my first girlfriend, and it was an open relationship, and things got really messy, um, kind of all of a sudden. And we had to end the relationship. It just was what it was. But this was written during that like no contact period where you're kind of like, are they thinking about me? Do they miss me? Like, you know, you shouldn't reach out. Like, you know, it's best for you to keep your distance. But it's like, well, you're wondering, your mind is full of so many questions, just racing thoughts. Um, and all the while I was so angry and bitter and so prickly about the whole thing. I just, mm, I just felt so many types of ways about it. But at the same time, I still felt a softness and like a place in my heart that still kind of gave way, that reminisced about like the sweet moments that we shared. And that's what you kind of see in that like second stanza where I'm kind of like taking my mind back to those moments, even through my anger and my grief and my rage. Um, so this poem kind of just um, reflects that time for me and how I was kind of battling those two, those two heavy, heavy weights of emotion. I'm going to pass it over to Devine. I love this poem so much. It speaks yeah. to my own personal relationship that went sour. So all the words just, I don't know, they beat within me like, yeah. as if this were my memory. Um, this poem really gave me an opportunity to be honest and that's really scary whenever you um, make art. I'm a shy person and so whenever I do create things it's like I'm you know immoralizing myself in certain moments and this one especially felt like a self-portrait to me. Um, uh, the words like where did it go wrong, um, we just wanted different things, I do wonder if they can see your lying, uh, it's really tough to go through a breakup with someone who you thought you were going to last for more longer or much longer with and to all of a sudden things just break away. You just feel so rejected by everything you feel rejected for. For me in my experience, I just felt rejected by 
by God, like how dare you let someone who I care so much about and someone who told me that they cared for me this much also just crush me flat like they did. And so with this collage, I wanted that to be reflective, you know, feeling dead and withered and broken apart. So I thought it was a great way for me to utilize the flowers looking like they were about to break off from their stems. And with my heart being unraveled and broken into, as you see with the rose petals and just like the messy kind of like connected um, thread, it just felt very um, palpable. You know, the days move on, the sun still shines and yet you feel like you're in the same place as you were. Mm. So I wish that people were more um, vulnerable and open and honest about how love or like the separation or the break from love can have you looking like this, right? I was thinking about whether I should tone my piece down whenever I was getting to my finale. Mm. I didn't want to give too much away about my personal feelings relating to the poem, but I thought adding in the tears just made it all more just honest and realistic because I don't be feeling whole. I feel so crushed and like other from the world. And so um, I think this poem, it just gave me a real chance to be honest in a different way. And I'm really proud of the poem and I'm really proud of what I could gather up from it. I, you have a good reason to be proud. Um, when I first saw this piece that Devine made, it like struck me so deeply. I had to look at it like no life for 10 minutes, just looking and looking and looking. And even though there's like negative space, it's not like it's full of so much imagery, but it was like just kind of sitting with me in a way that kind of chilled me. Um, Devine, you mentioned something about how the days go on and they pass and you're kind of just feeling cemented in your feeling. Um, and there's something about, and there's something about um, the faceless figure where it's like, it's like a lacking of identity. It's like, you're just like this hollowness. Um, and it just, it feels like you took my words and like, you made them visual, visual poetry. Hey, you did it. No, but for real, like you really like did that. So it, it really, really captured exactly um, a feeling that I think we know all too well, you and I both. Um, of course, I'm your biggest fan. Okay, um, on to our next highlighted work. Um, my next poem, something short, something brief. Um, Coming undone beneath you is my favorite act of surrender. I have never felt so put together while falling apart. So um, on the flip side of the heartbreak, this is when I was deep, deep, deep in love. Um, and I hadn't felt, I hadn't felt a love like this before, you know? Um, and what this poem kind of is meant to capture, signify for me is that I do create a facade or carry a, a kind of armor around myself to protect how I feel um, and having people not really know me. And it doesn't really come off so aggressive. It looks different for everybody. Some people have their aggression. Some people are shy and reserved. For me, I think I come off almost as like um, extra, I don't know, almost like very, very involved, if that even makes sense. Um, I'm like overly friendly sometimes, right? But um, I was in a place where I felt like I didn't need to pretend and I didn't need to perform for anybody because someone had already seen all that I was and loved it all. Like there's this saying, I guess, kind of in the black community, like I'll drink your dirty bath water. Like just to say like your devotion to somebody, like even the dirtiest, ugliest, most fallen apart, broken, just anything of every, any and everything about you, like I take it, I take you as you are and I love you and I cherish that um, and I worship it. And that's where I was, that's how I felt. That was the kind of love I was experiencing. So I was in a place where I felt like I can take my armor down and I can feel light um, and held and supported. 
so it's kind of almost like a, a paradox, an oxymoron, if you will, where it's like you can break down and be a mess in front of somebody and feel the most unput together that you've ever felt in your life, but at the same time, feel held and supported and seen and witnessed. Um, so that's where I was. And I like that I use the word surrender um, because maybe I'm a fighter, but if, you, if I can get to that place where I can lay it all down and out for you and be gentle and be soft. That's like, that's where I always want to be actually. So that's why, that's what this poem is for me. I think that being able to be um, witnessed, seen, loved on, cared on in that sort of way is the perfect semblance of like heaven on earth. And with this poem, I wanted to capture that as well as I could in my collage. So. What I wanted to the collage to feel like was very um, immersive because whenever you are understood, it really does feel like you can just do anything, that there was nothing ever wrong with you to begin with. And I feel like that's what's kind of like already intrinsic because as humans, we just get overwhelmed and we carry baggage and we just let things take over ourselves and make ourselves to be things that were really not like the worst person in the world, like unlovable, unworthy. And sometimes you just do need people to come over and to lend you that firm, soft hand and to shake you up a little bit and be like, I see you wholly as you are. You know, as you are right now, you don't even, if you decided to stay where you are right now, it would be perfect you don't necessarily have to change in order to gain someone, else, someone else's like respect or affection or anything like that. So I loved how this poem made me feel and I really wanted to um, capture the joy of that. And this was my first time doing so. And so my favorite part about this collage is actually the window piece. I like how my figure is looking towards something that looks so within reach, you know? Um, that's kind of like how you're being seen already, you know, but you also are leaping into believing that as well. Like in all your mess and all the chaos and all the mistakes, the things that you trip over yourself, what that, what not. It's still there. everything that you desire, right? And that is safety. And I feel like this collage makes me feel very um, safe. And I love how, um, you know, I love the beach. Um, I've been going to the beach often with I'm Love and those are actually the only times I go to the beach. So my kind of semblance in he of heaven on earth physically is the beach. So I really wanted that part of me to stick out and be there when I look at it too. So this collage makes me feel so good and warm and, and safe. Like everything that I want is actually within reach. And I hope people believe that for themselves too beautiful so so beautiful um i think we had talked about it when we were like how love can shape you um and it's more so not even like love is creating new things for you but it's helping you rediscover the aspects that you love about yourself that you feel ashamed about for whatever reason society your own imaginations all the things but it's like the looking through the window pane is like that's me right there actually um so I love this collage so much. It's literally um, my lock screen right now. It's like, I love this collage, it's so beautiful. And lastly, um, our last highlighted work before we get into some of y'all get to create with us for a second is um, just a quick one line poem from me. Your touch inspires healing and parts of me I never knew were hurting. So in general, I'm the kind of individual who really, really values human connection. I do love my solitude for sure. It's where I think and where I can kind of reflect, but I love being around people and um, creating relations, whether it's platonic, romantic, otherwise in between, you know, all of the above, right? But um, I love creating new relations because of how much I can learn about myself um, through my experiences with other people. So it's like you can be hearing someone else's story and you find yourself getting triggered, you know, like bringing up or dredging up things that you didn't even know were kind of like within you. So 
I was in a place where I was experiencing a type of connection where um, it was like the opposite. I'm hearing stories and I'm being held and I'm being, um, someone is holding space for me where as we're in this, it, it felt like not even on earth, as we're in our own dimension, um, the space and time that we were sharing was healing and soothing my wounds and my triggers that have been so long a part of who I am that they've just become normal and or suppressed that I even forgot that they were there. But when I was in this connection um, and in this time and space, I could feel, it almost felt like I could even see like the sinews and the muscles of my heart almost like coming back together, like becoming whole again. Um, and that's just what this poem represents for me. This piece is so important to me. Um, I created it last November of 2021 after a period of not collaging at all, thinking that I wasn't any longer good at it or that there was anything more for me to say, really. Um, you know, getting overwhelmed by life and responsibilities and just things outside of, um, you know, rest and relaxation. And I could no longer kind of find, um, you know, comfort and just release and creating. I just wanted to be doing anything but working on my computer. It started to feel like work. Yeah, so um, I love that I was able to put this together because it marked a new place in my collage thing, collaging life, let me call it that, because it kind of gave me a new statement to hold on to. It revealed new parts of me about what I really cared about, um, and that's relationships, um, bonds, connections, families, uh, platonic ties, anything, but I just want my stuff to feel like togetherness right being felt through or my importance when it comes to togetherness and um so in the poem it talks about healing and i look at this as a poem that healed me to continue i it put me in a really in like a better place in a confident place in a keep attempting place and I think that's really important because it means that I did not give up on myself. And um, it's the one that can write the um, Yeah, this poem, this, I mean, this collage and this poem too is like a bomb on my wounding. I love how every time I thought of me, I don't really photos of myself or these collages feel like pictures of me like whenever I see recognize myself it's fake and it's precious to me so um I'm so inspired and happy that I was able to like my own little story this poem of her experience So beautiful. Thank you, Devine. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed kind of walking through um, some of our highlighted works and things that we really wanted to share and just understanding our stories and how we are coming to this work in the background. But now we'd like to kind of interact with you all um, and have you create with us. So this is gonna be like two separate portions. It's gonna be a little bit of like, um, uh, Poetry 101, Collaging 101. So create with I'm Elohi, create with me. Um, I don't really, I couldn't really think of a really great name for my poetry style, but it just feels very, very intuitive for me. Um, I just kind of, I just follow where my emotions lead me. Um, that's really it. So I'm going to try and hopefully guide you all to do the same to kind of learn to listen to that little voice and learn to kind of express yourself through um, written word. If you are unfamiliar with um, being intuitive or feeling your feelings or writing in general, this can be a really good place to start and a really good practice. So 
I encourage y'all to keep an open mind and I would ask if you can um, get something to write with and something to write on and we're gonna get started, that's all you need. Um, yeah. So I kind of broke down, oh, well, here we go. I kind of broke down my um, steps into just four simple things that I think um, most people will be able to follow. So I'm going to invite you all to begin with a strong emotion or theme that's kind of been dominating or commanding your mental space as of lately. The reason why I um, use the words commanding and dominating is because I feel like that's how emotions kind of show up for me. Um, or it's like if that thing that's just been on your mind pestering you, I invite you to kind of sit with that, call it in, um, because there's a reason why it's been on your mind. And that's a part of the intuitive part, right? Just trusting and kind of being curious and explorative of your own, um, of what your mind is doing. Um, so I want you to hone in on that experience and I want you to feel it out and find power in the pause. If you'd like, you can close your eyes. Um, you can, I don't know, play music, do whatever you need to do to kind of get in the zone because it's very meditative for me at least. And take an opportunity to sit with um, all that you're feeling and try not to run away from the joy that it brings about or the discomfort that may arise or any other emotion. Um, it's like Devin mentioned earlier, we may be a lot better off if we accepted the vulnerability that all of us are capable of and actually try and find power and understanding and further healing in that. So sit with what you're feeling um, and take a moment to try and visualize. It doesn't necessarily need to be images. If what you're feeling is bringing about certain kinds of words, no matter how large and grandiose or unrelated they may be, accept it, hold on to them, write them out on the paper, um, or just hold them in your mind if that's what you would like to do at this moment. Um, or think of any images, any visuals that are kind of coming about as you're sitting with whatever you've been thinking about. Um, and lastly, just take your pen to the page, no judgment, don't judge yourself. This is just who you are, accept that and write and flow. Um, this is the time to abandon self-consciousness. This is the time to abandon self-judgment and self-hate and self-critique. This is the moment to embrace the fullness of your softness um, and be as flowery and grandiose in your, and passionate in your language as possible because it's poetry. This is the moment where you get to do that. Um, you can't really do that at work. You can't really just tell somebody like, dang, my day has been feeling like a hundred tornadoes. You can't really just get to say that to people without them being like, you okay, girl? So this is the moment to like, let it flow, write it out and, and enjoy. I'm going to give you all a few moments of silence just to kind of get your thoughts together. I'm going to close my mouth. And then I'm going to go ahead and share a poem that I've written recently and kind of take y'all through my own mental process. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my own. Um, and feel free to share anything that you've written in the chat. I would love to read. Um, like I said, it's a no judgment space. So um, yeah, I would love to hear some of y'all's words. But um, following my own steps, I have definitely been playing with the theme and trying to understand the theme of what it really means to walk a journey of faith, um, which is kind of ironic because that's my middle name. Um, although I've never, for the longest time, I never really felt quite connected to that name. Um, but now as I'm getting older and I'm going through my own trials and tribulations and having to bet on myself, um, and hold steadfast in my own beliefs, regardless of what everyone else is doing and what the world and the universe is presenting to me, I have to hold on to my faith. This is something that I'm, it's a journey that I'm having to kind of walk alone, but I'm trying to just continue to affirm that things are working out for me um, behind the scenes, whether I know it or not, and in the places where I can't always see. So 
as I was feeling out, you know, this idea of faith, and I was kind of taking a moment to sit with my, you know, find power in the pause and visualize the words and feelings that were coming about. Honestly, when I was thinking of faith, I really was reminded that it's very scary um, because you don't know, it's so unknown. Um, and it's an isolating experience and it's quite confusing, um, but it's so necessary and it's deeply rewarding when you hold onto that faith. At least that's what I'd like to believe. Um, and as I was trying to visualize, I was thinking like, when I was thinking about faith, I was thinking about instant gratification and how it's just so not that. Um, and I wanted to really answer my own confusion with an affirmation that I could practice um, and that could kind of become a part of my daily routine. So I came up with a mantra. Um, the universe is conspiring in my favor, which is something that I want to be true. And I use the word conspiring because I feel that life is full of so many very pleasant and unpleasant surprises. Um, but ultimately, I always have to hold out the hope that and stand firm in the faith that everything that's happening or occurring is happening for my greater good. Um, so my next line is, sometimes the gratification of that is not always instant, nor is it always clear, but just is. I wanted to speak about the honesty of that because I'm, I consider myself a very spiritual person, but I notice that there's a lot of fluff and hot air within that community where people just say crazy stuff or like big statements, huge things without any kind of real, like there's, there's no, there's no ground underneath it all. Um, and it can all get very woo woo um for lack of better words and I just wanted to say what it is that there is just a lot that you just don't know as you as I'm continuing through this journey and lastly my last line is these are the truths that I wrestle with late at night when all I have to hold are my hopes and fears again almost in opposition to the hollowness that affirmations hold a lot of the time I wanted to make space and hold space for the uncertainty and the fear and the very real human insecurity that comes along with this journey. Um, as I explore faith all alone, I wanted to create a visual that I felt that, I mean, I've definitely experienced and I know other people can relate to of when you're in bed at night and you feel both sides of the bed just cold and you're just there, you're there with all of your thoughts just to keep you company. Um, and that's just what you do. And I felt like I wanted to capture the hopefulness, but also the underlying anxiety and unease as I embrace the journey that I'm walking through. So that is my poem. Um, again, like I said, I would love for you all to share some with me, um, drop in the chat. Um, I'm also going to have some of my socials at the end. So if you want to connect, you can also send me your poems there too. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Devine. That was amazing, honey, Loki. Thank now, you, love. Welcome. Now, guys, it's time to create with me. This is just my digital collage started by just little um, tips and tricks and sources, all of those things so you can get started on your own. So. I'm gonna share my screen with you. Awesome, do you guys see my screen? Yes, okay, awesome. Okay, awesome. So um, first of all, I do all my collages on Photoshop. It's my preferred software. It's um, photo, photo uh, manipulation software. So literally everything that has to do with collaging, digital collaging. I think that I get my desired result every time on here. But uh, before I always start, I like to source my photos. And this is my favorite site to collect um, my elements, my PNGs, my stock photos. And this is rawpixel.com. It's just an amazing resource that I'm always going back to. It's almost what I exclusively use sometimes too. And they have public domain images. They have scans from um, 
books and all those things. So sometimes the textures of my um, collages sometimes can come from the artwork that I'm using. So yeah, I recommend it so much. So anyways, I click away, I see something I like, and then I download it. And then I get back to my canvas on Photoshop. I wanted to create some fan art with you guys. I just thought it'd be fun. I was inspired by a, um, an animated music video that I saw a couple of days ago. And I said, why not? So um, this is my blank canvas. Um, I select my sizing originally when I open up the software. And I think this is eight by five times 11. And after that, I have my folders where I've saved up my images and I bring them onto my artboard and we're starting off with this. And I wanna show you guys how to use some of the tools in Photoshop. And the really cool thing with collaging is that there are no rules for how something is supposed to look. So it's free range and your control. So I really think this image is super, super pretty. And I actually think the star of this image is this figure right here. So what I'm gonna do first is make my image editable. And then I pick out a cutting tool. Um, Polygon is really nice if you have um, angular shapes, but I like to always go for the magnetic tool because it helps me select things quickly. So, and it's like, it gives me that really clean cut that I want. But the thing about it is I kind of have to go a little slow because it's really sensitive and it selects every point that your mouse drags along. So here we go, here we go. I feel like I'm performing surgery right now. I literally am holding my breath because I don't want to make any mistake. But yeah. also, the cool thing about collages is that no one can really see your mistake or like the mistake that you think is a mistake isn't really a visible mistake like that, if that makes sense. Okay, we're almost to the top. So point A is touching point B. And okay, so my image is selected and I wanna cut out everything else in the photo. So what I do is go into Shift Command I. This is a Mac computer, by the way, so on Windows. I'm not so sure, but we'll figure it out. And then after that, I click delete. And so everything else was deselected. And the thing about um, collaging is you have to do a lot of, you know, just like layering and stacking. You yourself only know which place your figure looks best in if you move it around. But I like it right here. And for now, it looks good. So I'm going to go back into my folder and select something else. I want to play with the background. So I'm going to add in this texture. Um, the neat thing about overlays is that as well as giving you something that looks, you know, like touchable, you can also use it to customize your background. So instead of using it as an overlay, I want to put it to the back. And I actually want to color it too. So I'm going to go into the shape tool, click the rectangle, size up my canvas, put it at the bottom underneath my, um, my overlay piece. And I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to pick purple or pink. It's pink. And I click back on my um, overlay that I'm using as a background. And there's this neat little um, tab on the layers panel that gives you kind of like the option to merge, but in a way that looks like this. I've never had the right word to describe it, but it gives it this like different settings of what your background could be like. And it almost looks like construction paper, which I think is very, very, very cool. So I like hard light, so it's gonna stay like that. And then I just continue off and go back into my folder. I really like this butterfly. It's so, it's kind of like going out just like his hands are. So mm -hmm. I like it there. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's so pretty there. And I also wanna teach you something else. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing with any image, really. Um, you can go into this tab and 
if it's not working as, you know, just like a cutout that's layered on top of your image already or your canvas already, you can just kind of like dissolve it into the background. So it looks kind of like it's being etched on the construction paper or construction paper. <laughs> And then I just continue in that sort of way. Um, I like this one. So out of the panels that I see on this image, I like the one on the far right. So I'm gonna make it editable. Another great tool, we're gonna use Polygon now. And we just shape it up. It doesn't have to be anything too clean. And again, shift command I, delete, deselect, and I find where I think that would fit best. Let's say over there. And so I rearrange the order of my elements in my panel bar, and I size it up. One thing about me also, I love to use the eraser tool. <laughs> It's also one of my favorites. So if I, I know this will stay where it's at. So that's why I'm also comfortable using the eraser tool. So I go in, I go in, I go in, all of that. And you can also just like size it up too and make a bigger kind of eraser. Anyways, but yeah, just like that. And you continue until you get to a place where you're comfortable. And that could really be anywhere. The fun thing also about collage, it can literally end anywhere. It can be as like gaudy and tight and just, you know, packed up together, or it can be as um, open and spacious and negative as much as you want it to be. So it the possibilities are endless and that's really cool. Like as an artist or as someone who makes art, um, you should make art for you because you like what you're doing. The most important thing is to have fun. And whether, like you learn about yourself whenever you get creative. So you don't have to be born with like intrinsic creativity. Um, collecting these things and just, you know, playing with your layer box and all of that stuff, cutting pieces up, you'll figure it out. Um, Another thing that I like to do is use the marquee tool. I'm gonna size out my canvas real quick. And you see how um, I cut this up, this specific subject up um, earlier, but I obviously didn't get, get it too right. So what I do is like, I like to go in and take the rectang rectangular marquee tool and select and click delete. And that gives you also like a very precise and clean erasing and then if there's pieces left over you can do that again and delete it and yeah you can keep on going as much as you'd like but this is what it came to be um i was doing i was playing a little bit with it last night and this is what i came up with and um yeah, that's like the fun of collage. Like you really never know where you're going until things begin to add and sit well next to each other. I had an original plan that it was going to like look somewhat like this, but this looks very different from how I sketched it in my art book. So it's always a pleasant surprise to come into happy accidents. And I think that's what collage teaches you, like perfection can never be attained in the way that you like may perceive it to come about. Yeah, like I think this helps me embrace like mistakes and just letting things take me where they may take me. And um, I encourage people to start collaging and just see, or like whatever art that they're interested in and see what they can learn about themselves, see what they can be revealed to and see how much fun they're gonna have with their like I, I never get bored and I give so much time to collaging. And it always feels like a new day and it's a very comfortable feeling. That's what I have to show you all.
and great. And we're at the end of our presentation. Thank uh, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and do you guys have any questions? We did get a couple questions. Uh, I just want to thank you both for uh, taking the time for uh, to be with us today. And in the chat, everyone seemed to adore your work along with myself and everybody. I think we adored both of your works. And um, thank you for sharing your experience and expertise. I saw a couple of times people were like, I'm feeling so many emotions and I'm crying right now. So, uh, <laughs> uh, one question was um, How have you seen your art shift or transform in the past couple of years due to the pandemic? Jane, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. I actually started um, my work in the pandemic. Um, I think a couple of months after it was announced that we were all going into lockdown. I started collaging as, you know, as a way to lead up and figure out school later on. And then eventually it became something that gave me comfort and gave me warmth and helped me to explore my different interests. Um, I wasn't really seeing people at the time, just like everybody else. So um, working on things that were exciting to me, playing around, kind of gave me like a like, oh, it's okay. It's okay right now. You know, it was like a soothing kind of work that I was doing with myself. And then outside of like the pandemic and, you know, November of 2021 coming in and me discovering that this is kind of like the route that I wanted to go with my work and make it more emotive and all of those things. It was because my bonds were strengthening and everything like that. In real life, I was maturing and growing older, and so were the people in my life, and we were all coming to similar places of relatability, and just like, like I see you like no other, and that was really special to me. Um, like, my relationship with Emily has grown over the times since we were kids to now, so um, that's been the focus of my work, just like love love and bonds and just relationships and I'm so happy that I'm in this um kind of like space clear space you know what I'm saying like there's no confusion about this is where I want to continue going I think for me um I've seen my my writing change in that I don't know it just feels so much more grown up um I think before I used to kind of rely on, um, I used to rely on like a lot of, what's what's the word I wanna use? Like almost religious type of uh, language and imagery that I would use in my poems, just I think maybe because that is what I was reading in other poets, but I feel like I've grown more into my own thing um, and I'm able to kind of, um, I don't know, create, a certain kind of beauty that feels unique to myself and maybe it's not trying to mimic anybody else. Um, so I think that's how I've changed. Um, I'm also less interested in writing about, I'm, well, it's not that I'm less interested. I love writing about love, but now I wanna write about my love, what that means and does for myself more than what other people's love has done for me. Although it's done a lot, but okay, period, coming into my own, per, yeah, so very that. <laughs> I think I also, there's also a question here on the Q&A that asks if I've ever presented my poems in public. This is once, one poem at a conference in DC years ago in like 2018 or 2019. And this is the second time ever. I prefer my poems to be read rather than I speak them. Actually, it's not that I prefer, I just never do it. But yeah. I think they have a lot of life when you um read them instead of us reading them but yeah I agree I need to get into the habit <laughs> I'm shy about it I don't know why they're so beautiful um yeah. each of the poems that you read my heart was just like okay I'm gonna take my headset off and just <laughs> go sit with myself for a while let's go lie down <laughs> <Again>. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, there was a question where they can find more of your poetry. I must. <laughs> um, oof. Okay. Davine and I are actually in the process of getting my website together. So please wait and hold on. But until then, please, um, you can follow us on our socials, which we have on the next slide. Um, and yeah, that's where I post most of my poetry. You can keep up with me there and all the updates and Davine as well, right? For your works. Sorry, I was muted, but yes. Um, I usually post my collages on my Instagram. They get archived later on, but whenever I choose to share, that's where I share them. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to embarrass Devine. I don't know why, but she has a beautiful portfolio. So I'm dropping that in the chat. She hates when I want to share it, but her portfolio is gorgeous. Y'all, please go go immerse yourself in her in her world. Oh, God. Be nice, y'all. Please. <laughs> uh, you don't have to worry about it. Your work stands on its own, and it's just really, really beautiful. Thank you so much. There was a comment about the first um, collage that you, the of the the set, the first yeah, slide. The first um, one. Or there's like a streak at the bottom, um, yeah. and someone said it reminded them that they loved it, and they reminded them of heartstrings. Yes, um, that one was that collage was very intentional because I was putting myself together in that one. So I didn't want to fake the funk on my feelings whenever it came to heartbreak. Yeah, whenever you do go through such a traumatic event like that, your heart does unravel and it's still almost like connected to that other heart that's so, so, so out of reach away from you. And so, um, yeah, whenever I, I was so lucky to find that. I was like, this is a hard thing to scout, but I did find it eventually. And I'm so happy it made everything look connected and together and whole it's my favorite that the poem too um i mean when you were just talking about you know the um, the love that you have not that other people give in that first poem i know it was about another person and your relationship with them but i read it as like the way that i talk to myself yeah and um yeah and how you sometimes have like I don't know, these different versions of it's like a, a battle or like almost like a yeah very conversational I talk to myself all day long I'm my own little best friend up here um in my mind and that was definitely like what that poem was for me me kind of like asking my own questions and knowing I wouldn't get an answer but hoping that I would a little bit so I, I'm so glad that resonated I'm so glad that was felt Sometimes, you know, you just put it off as, oh, we had other, we had other plans or whatever, but are you really asking yourself like, that deep question of, yeah. um, there are some other, there, the chat's been going right now. Um, I haven't kept up with it, but um, there's a question, what do the collages remind you about? And then I guess that'll be our last question as we're over time and we want to make sure people uh, can get out what do the collages remind me about um that's a good question I've never ever asked myself something in that wording like that in that wording but I think it just reminds me of my every day it's collaging is like journaling to me I have a hard time getting my pen to paper but when it comes to making something that I can see, I'm a visually oriented person. So seeing something means that I can understand and compute it so much better than just seeing it on paper. I need to see movement or see something actionable, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I think it just reminds me of my day to day. Yeah, it's, it's like the only place where I just become a little fearless, right? I think I'm just like, so, you know, sometimes you think you're like embarrassing or small or all these things and you just don't want to face yourself. I think collaging gives me an opportunity to always um, face myself. And it's funny that I do it often so like intentionally, you know, I don't 
set a schedule like Monday 4 p.m. collagen time. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's so weird. <laughs> um, I just I fall into it and it holds so many like revelations for me. I don't know. It makes me feel like I exist because remember, I also said that they, they're like pictures. And I've heard it before that when you don't capture yourself, you kind of don't exist, right? And I'm not too fond of taking photos, but I think that collaging is like a great alternative to having like, those are, that's me, that's a snapshot of me, you know, that's my selfie of the day, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope I answered the question right. I just went off on a tangent. <laughs> uh, I think so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, well, um, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, thank you, Aima, Divine, um, very beautiful. If if uh, you want to share this with anyone, we did go Facebook Live, so it's available on our Facebook, um, Facebook slash library art. Um, so again, bye everyone, and thank you so much. Bye, thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> thank y'all we appreciate and love you and thank you so much Gina for inviting us to do this like STC library is everything no. the, the girls are trying to keep up they can't <laughs> <laughs> okay. bye bye